Hey everyone. How y'all doing today? Now, Elon put out a tweet. And, things are going to get interesting. He said that he was going to publish what really happened with the Hunter Biden story, suppression by Twitter. So, if you haven't seen it yet, or you're not on Twitter, here it is. So Matt from Twitter is doing the tweets as a thread called the Twitter Files. What you're about to read is the first installment in a series, based upon thousands of internal documents obtained by sources at Twitter. The Twitter files tell an incredible story from inside one of the world's largest and most influential social media platforms. It is a Frankenstein-ian tale of a human-built mechanism grown out of the control of its designer. Twitter in its conception was a brilliant tool for enabling instant mass communication, making a true real-time global conversation possible for the first time. In an early conception, Twitter more than lived up to its mission statement, giving people the power to create and share ideas and information instantly, without barriers. As time progressed, however, the company was slowly forced to add those barriers. Some of the first tools for controlling speech were designed to combat the likes of spam and financial fraudsters. Slowly, over time, Twitter staff and executives began to find more and more uses for these tools. Outsiders began petitioning the company to manipulate speech as well, first a little, then more often, then constantly. By 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. They would come back, handled. Celebrities and unknowns alike could be removed or reviewed at the behest of a political party. Both parties had access to these tools. For instance, in 2020, requests from both the Trump White House and the Biden campaign were received and honored. However, this system wasn't balanced. It was based on contacts. Because Twitter was and is overwhelmingly staffed by people of one political orientation, there were more channels, more ways to complain, open to the left, well Democrats, than the right. The resulting slant in content moderation decisions is visible in the documents you're about to read. However, it's also the assessment of multiple current and former high-level executives. Okay, there was more throat clearing about the process, but screw it, let's jump forward. The Twitter Files, Part 1, How and Why Twitter Blocked the Hunter Biden Laptop Story On October 14, 2020, The New York Post published, Biden in Secret Emails, an expose based in the contents of Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop. Twitter took extraordinary steps to suppress the story, removing links and posting warnings that it may be unsafe. They even blocked its transmission via direct message, a tool reserved for extreme cases, for example, child pornography. The White House spokeswoman was locked out of her account for tweeting about the story, prompting a furious letter from the Trump campaign staffer, who seethed, at least pretend to care for the next 20 days. This led the public policy executive to send out a what the F query. Several employees noted that there was tension between the comms policy teams, who had little or less control over moderation, and the safety trust teams. Strom's note returned the answer that the laptop story had been removed for violation of the company's hacked materials policy. Although several sources recalled hearing about a general warning, from federal law enforcement that summer, about possible foreign hacks, there's no evidence, that I've seen, of any government involvement in the laptop story. In fact that might have been the problem. The decision was made at the highest levels of the company, but without the knowledge of the CEO, but with a former head of legal policy and trust, playing a key role. They just freelanced it, is how one former employee characterized the decision. Hacking was the excuse, but within a few hours, pretty much everyone realized that wasn't going to hold. But no one had the guts to reverse it. You can see the confusion in the following lengthy exchange, which ends up including the former head of legal policy and trust, and former trust and safety chief. Comms official writes, I'm struggling to understand the policy basis for making this as unsafe. By this point everyone knew this was F said one former employee, but the response was essentially to err on the side of. Continuing to err. Former vice president of global comms asks, can we truthfully claim that this is part of the policy? To which the former deputy general counsel again seems to advise staying the nun course, because caution is warranted. A fundamental problem with tech companies and content moderation, many people in charge of speech know or care little about speech, and have to be told the basics by outsiders. In one humorous exchange on day one, Democratic congressman reaches out to gently suggest she hop on the phone to talk about the backlash re speech. Karna was the only Democratic official I could find in the files who expressed concern. Gade replies quickly, 
immediately diving into the weeds of Twitter policy, unaware Karna is more worried about the Bill of Rights. Karna tries to reroute the conversation to the First Amendment, mention of which is generally hard to find in the files. Within a day, the head of public policy receives a ghastly letter report from the research firm, NetChoice, which had already polled 12 members of Congress, nine Republicans and three Democrats, from the House of Judiciary Committee to Rep. Judy Chu's office. NetChoice lets Twitter know a bloodbath awaits in upcoming Hill hearings, with members saying it's a tipping point, complaining tech has grown so big that they can't even regulate themselves, so government may need to intervene. He reports to Twitter that some Hill figures are characterizing the laptop story as tech's access Hollywood moment. The First Amendment is an absolute. His letter contains chilling passages relaying Democratic lawmakers' attitudes. They want more moderation, and as for the Bill of Rights, it's not absolute. An amazing subplot of the Twitter Hunter Biden laptop affair, was how much was done without the knowledge of CEO Jack Dorsey, and how long it took for the situation to get unfucked as one ex-employee put it, even after Dorsey jumped in. While reviewing emails, I saw a familiar name, my own. Dorsey sent her a copy of my Substack article blasting the incident. There are multiple instances in the files of Dorsey intervening to question suspensions and other moderation actions, for accounts across the political spectrum. The problem with the hack materials ruling, several sources said, was that this normally required an official law enforcement finding of a hack. But such a finding never appears throughout what one executive describes as a whirlwind 24-hour, company-wide mess. It's been a whirlwind 96 hours for me, too. There is much more to come, including answers to questions about issues like shadow banning, boosting, follower counts, the fate of various individual accounts, and more. These issues are not limited to the political right. Good night, everyone. Thanks to all those who picked up the phone in the last few days. Well that's what Twitter had to say. And that's about it for now. So thank you for being here.